Welcome once more to this YouTube channel. Kindly subscribe to this channel. The topic is pelvic fascia. That's pelvic fascia. Pelvic fascia is the connective tissue that occupies the space between the membranous peritoneum that you find in the pelvic cavity and the muscular pelvic walls and floor. That's area not occupied by the pelvic viscera. You find the pelvic fascia as a continuation of the thin and the abdominal fascia that um, you have between the muscular abdominal walls and the peritoneum that is found superiorly. The pelvic fascia has been described as having parietal and visceral parts. Right here is an illustration of a section through the pelvic fascia. Take a, a close look at the diagram. You are going to see the layers you have uh, in the pelvic wall. You can see the pelvic wall. You can see the muscles of the pelvic wall. Then you can see the peritoneum there. You can see the pelvic fascia. The pelvic fascia is colored green. It's colored green there. So the pelvic fascia is illustrated in this section. Also, you take a look at this illustration. It's a coronal section through the pelvis. And then you can see the pelvic fascia there, colored green. You find the peritoneum there also, with a blue as a blue line. And the parietal pelvic fascia is colored green. You also have the visceral pelvic fascia colored with red color. And of course, the endopelvic fascia is also right there. All are shown in this diagram. Also here, you have an illustration of the coronal section through the pelvic cavity. You can also see the pelvic fascia right there. Now, let's talk about the membranous pelvic fascia. That's the viscera and parietal um, layers. The parietal pelvic fascia is a membranous layer of variable thickness. It lines the inner, that's the deep or pelvic aspect of the muscles that form the wall and floor of the pelvis. The parietal pelvic fascia covers the pelvic surfaces of the obturator internus muscle. It also covers the pelvic surfaces of the piriformis, the cosigeus, the levator ani, and part of the urethral sphincter muscles. You must know that there are specific parts of the pelvic fascia, and these parts are named according to the muscles they cover. For example, you have the obturator fascia, that part of the pelvic fascia that covers the obturator muscle. The pelvic fascia, that the parietal um, layer of the pelvic fascia is continuous superiorly with the transversalis and illosoas fascia that you find in the abdomen. Now let's talk, let me talk about the visceral pelvic fascia. The visceral pelvic fascia includes the membranous fascia that directly ensheathes the pelvic organs. It forms the adverticial layer of each. The membranous parietal and visceral layers are actually continuous where the organs penetrate the pelvic floor. At that um, area, you have the parietal, fascia, the parietal fascia thickening and forming the tendinous arc of the pelvic fascia, which is a continuous bilateral band that runs from the pubis to the sacrum along the pelvic floor adjacent to the viscera. You must not forget that the anterior most part of this tendinous arc, that's what we call the puboprostatic ligament in males and puboversical ligament in females, connects the prostate to the pubis in the male. Then in the female, it connects uh, the fundus of the bladder to the pubis. The posteriormost part of the tendinous arc band runs as what we call the sacrogenital ligament from the sacrum al around the side of the rectum and attaches to the prostate in the males or the vagina in the females.
I really need to talk about the endopelvic fascia that's the loose and condensed layers. Right here is an illustration of the endopelvic fascia. It's a cross section actually through the pelvis. You can see the bladder anteriorly, then the uterus and posteriorly is a section through the rectum. So the endopelvic fascia is uh, illustrated there surrounding the viscera. So now let, let me talk about the endopelvic fascia. It's uh, usually abundant, it's, uh, abundant connective tissue you find remaining between the pyreta and viscera membranous layer. And it's uh, considered part of the viscera fascia actually, but you have various people labeling parts of it as pyreta. It is more appropriate to consider this fascia simply as uh, extra peritoneal or subperitoneal and the pelvic fascia. It is continuous with both the parietal and the visceral membranous fascias. This fascia forms a connective tissue matrix or like a packing material for the pelvic viscera. It varies in density and content. Some of it is loose. That's what we call the loose and the pelvic fascia because it has loose areola, that's fatty tissue. And then this uh, part is actually devoid of many structures. What you have there is just minor lymphatics and nutrient vessels. In the course of dissection or in the course of surgery, the fingers can be pushed into this loose tissue with ease and it actually creates actual spaces by blunt dissection. For example, you find this. Uh, connective tissue between the pubis and the bladder anteriorly and between the sacrum and the rectum posteriorly. This potential space is normally made up of a layer of loose fatty tissue and uh, you could find it uh, retropubic, what we call the previsical, um, and it's actually extending posteriorly also as paravasical. You could also find it as retrorectal or presacral space. The presence of this loose connective tissue, we like it because it creates some room for expansion of the urinary bladder and the rectal ampulla during filling, as urine is filling the bladder and the rectum is filling up the fecal matter. So you have an um, endopelvic fascia that do not uh, differ much in the gross appearance. You have other parts of the pelvic fascia that have fibrous consistency. That's the condensed and the pelvic fascia. And it contains abundance of collagen and elastic fibers. And according to some persons, you could also have smooth muscle fibers. This condensed and the pelvic fascia is um, Called, uh, it's actually facial condensation, uh, condensation of uh, fibrous tissue, and it presents as pelvic ligaments. For example, in the course of dissection, you find out that when you put the finger of one hand into the retropubic space and the fingers of the other hand into the presacral space, and you try to bring the two fingers together along the lateral pelvic wall, you find out that they do not meet or pass from one space to the other because of this condensed endopelvic fascia. They encounter what we call the so-called the hypogastric sheet, which is a thick band of condensed pelvic fascia. This uh, fascia condensation is not uh, just a barrier so separating two potential spaces. It also serves as a passageway to blood vessels and nerves that pass from the lateral wall of the pelvis to the pelvic viscera along with the ureters in the male. Also in the male, you have the ductus deferens. This condensed and the pelvic fascia extends medially from the lateral wall. The hypogastric sheet divides into three lamellae, like three wings or three leaflets. And it now passes between the pelvic organs and it serves to convey structures, neurovascular structures precisely. And then, in the process it, process, it gives support. So because of this supportive function, the hypogastric sheet, you could refer to uh, the structure as a ligament. 
you have the anterior most lamina, the lateral ligament of the bladder, which passes to the bladder, conveying the superior vesical arteries and veins. Then the posterior lamina passes to the rectum and it conveys the middle rectal artery and vein. You must remember that in the male, the middle lamina forms a relatively thin fascial partition, the retrovesical septum, and this you find it between the posterior surface of the bladder and the prostate anteriorly, and the, the rectum posteriorly. So you look at it between the rectum posteriorly and then you have uh, the posterior surface of the bladder and the prostate anteriorly. In the female, you have the middle lamina markedly substantial than the anterior and posterior, and uh, it passes medial to the medially to the uterine cervix and vagina, and it is called the transverse cervical or cardinal ligament. It's also called the lateral cervical or marking broad ligament. In its superior most part, at the base of the peritoneal broad ligament, you have the uterine artery, and this runs transversely towards the cervix. Then you also have the ureters passing immediately inferior to the uterine artery on each side, so uh, towards the bladder. This relationship of uh, the ureter passing inferior to the uterine artery is what is described as water passing under the bridge. And it's very important as far as the con surgeons are concerned when they are carrying out surgery with the gy gynecologist specifically. The transverse cervical ligament and the way in which the uterus normally rests on top of the bladder gives the main passive support for the uterus. The perineal muscles provide dynamic support for the uterus by contracting during moments of increased intra-abdominal pressure like during sneezing and coughing. Don't forget that the passive, passive and dynamic supports together resist the tendency of the uterus to fall or be pushed through the hollow tube formed by the vagina. Because if that happens, we say there's uterine prolapse. And of course, the woman affected is not going to be happy. The transverse cervical ligament has enough fibrous content to anchor wide loops of sutures during surgical repair. So the surgeons, they love the transverse cervical ligament because it's very useful during suturing after surgical repair. In addition to the ischio, you have the ischio anal fossae inferior to the pelvic uh, diaphragm that's in the perineum. You also have a surgically important potential perirectal space in the loose extraperitoneal connective tissue and this is found superior to the pelvic diaphragm. It is divided into anterior and posterior regions by the lateral rectal ligaments, what we call the rectal stalk, stalks. And these are posterior laminae of the hypogastric sheet. These ligaments connect the rectum to the parietal pelvic fascia at the S2, S3, S4 levels, that's the levels of the second, third, and fourth sacral vertebrae. The middle rectal arteries and rectal nerve plexuses are embedded in the lateral rectal ligaments. So, no doubt, the hypogastric sheet is a part of the condensed pelvic fascia that is very important as far as the surgeons are concerned. I've been talking about the pelvic fascia, that's the parietal and viscera, then of course the endopelvic fascia. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you've not done so. Goodbye for now.